Welcome to Wheelock's Latin, Chapter 40. In this chapter, we're going to be looking at ne, num, and none in direct questions. We'll be looking at fear clauses and genitive and ablative of description. Let's look first at ne, num, and none in direct questions. Now, you re may remember we have studied previously um, how Romans asked questions. And they did it in various ways. Uh, they could begin a sentence with an interrogative word like quiz, quid, cur, ubi, etc. Uh, you could add an ne as a suffix to the first word of the sentence. And these are all ways that we've previously studied uh, questions. But Romans could also ask what we call leading direct questions. And they could do this either asking a question where they expected a yes answer or ask a question where the expected answer was a no. So to get the yes answer, and not really to get it, but anticipating a yes answer, they would introduce the question with no ne uh, if they're expecting it to be yes. And if it's expected that the answer is no to the question, then they're going to introduce the question with num. Let's uh, look at some examples of this. Here we have quis win it. This is again something we've seen previously. We're going to use the interrogative pronoun here, who is coming, quis win it. We could uh, use another um, uh, interrogative word here, cur win it. Why is he coming? And then, of course, adding the ne suffix to win it would give us win it, nay, is he coming? So these are all questions or forms that you've you've seen previously. In this chapter, we're going to add the idea of a leading. We're leading the person to give us an answer that we're expecting either a yes or no. And here for an expected yes. Now we may not get the yes answer, but we're expecting a yes answer. We're going to add none at the beginning and that would leave us with he is coming, isn't he? Or you could say isn't he coming? You're expecting that he is coming. But if you're expecting that he's not coming, that's the expected answer. You would say num when it. He isn't coming, is he? And that would be how you do interrogative uh, leading direct questions. All right. Let's look at fear clauses. I think that's pretty simple. I don't, I'm not spending a lot of time on that because I just think it's pretty, pretty clear. <laughs> fear clauses. Let's look at fear clause. This is one of our last uses of the subjunctive mood. We've learned a lot of different uses of the subjunctive, the subjunctive uh, jusive, or we said the jusive. Um, we've looked at the what purpose clause, result clause. We've looked at inter um, subjunctive with cum clauses, uh, proviso clauses, all, all kinds of things here. Uh, but here, and this, by the way, is not the last of the subjunctive uses, but it is the last we'll be learning here in Wheelock's. Now, if you continue your Latin studies, you will learn other uses, additional uses of the subjunctive. But here we're going to finish up with the fear clause. So the fear clause is a subjunctive subordinate clause which will be introduced, now got to stay with me here because this is exact opposite of what we normally would expect. We're going to introduce this subordinate clause if it's a positive statement with ne. And if it's a negative fear clause, we're going to introduce it with ut, along with a verb of fear in the main sentence. And this will indicate something the speaker is fearful of. Now, I know we go back to, say, purpose clauses. Uh, we had a subjunctive subordinate clause introduced by ut or ne, and ut would be the positive and ne was the negative. Here it is essentially the opposite. It's the opposite of what you would expect. There are reasons for that. We'll discuss it in class uh, this next week here. Let's see how we recognize the fear clause. Of course, the main verb will be a, a, a verb of fear. The subordinate verb uh, will be subjunctive and again will be in introduced by a ne or an ut. Now, how do we translate this? Well, we're going to translate the ne or ut with a, a that. Remember, we, we've always added, like for purpose clauses, indirect statements, we add a that in there to help transition from the, um, uh, the main sentence into the, uh, the subordinate clause. So we're going to add that, or if it's a negative, that not. And of course, the subjunctive verb you will translate with auxiliaries like will or may for primary sequence or would or might for secondary sequences. Now, here's a couple of examples here. Timo o ne id credant. Uh, Timo o is I fear. This ne is introducing the fear clause. It's what the speaker is afraid of. Ne id credant. 
And so we've got credant in the subjunctive mood here. I fear that they will believe it. it. They will believe it. Uh, and so this is, even though it's a ne, this is a positive form of the fear clause. I fear that they will believe it, or I feel that they may believe it. Notice we have a present tense main verb and a present tense subjunctive. So that subjunctive, uh, remember our, our sequence of tense, it's happening at the same time as the main verb. So we will say will or may. Let's look at the negative version of this sentence. Tema o ut id credant. So I fear that they will not believe it or that they may not believe it. So the ut here is introducing the, neg it's negating the, the fear. They fear that they will not believe. All right, let's look at a couple of more examples here. Timorarunt ne amicos ameterent. Now, I'll give you the time to process that for a second here. What is the ne telling us? Is it introducing a positive or negative fear clause? What do you think? They fear or they feared, perfect tense, they feared that they would lose or might lose their friends. This is a positive fear, um, fear clause. They feared that they would lose their friends or they might lose their friends. Notice that perfect tense in the main verb and the imperfect uh, subjunctive mood here, admitterent, uh, tells us that it is happening at the same time, but it is in the past. So we're going to go with would or might for our auxiliaries here. Here's another example. Meruisti ut mulieres ex casa existent. So we've got you were afraid, again a perfect verb here, you were afraid that, and ut is telling us it is a negative fear clause. You were afraid that the women, mulieres, had not existent, had not left, uh, uh, had not left the house ex casa. So this ut tells us it's a negative. We're afraid that they have not left existent is in the pluperfect here. So that pluperfect telling, it's it's happening in the past, but prior to the main verb, which is already in the past, we have to make sure we translate that as had not left the house. You were afraid that the women had not left the house. Now, alternatively, sometimes the Romans would use ne non in place of the new, the ut, <laughs> in place of the ut. And this would essentially yield uh, the exact same translation. Here we have metuisti ne non mulieres ex casa existent. So even though we don't have the ut, we, we have the ne, but it's got the non. So that's negating the na. So it's it's like a, it's a double negative, <laughs> it seems like. But this is, a, this is a negation here. So again, you would translate that. You were afraid that the women had not left the house. So it's exact same thing as the previous using ut. So ut can be replaced with ne, no, ne, ne non. All right. Last thing we're going to learn this chapter and this semester is genitive and ablative of description. So we've learned a lot of different uses of both genitive case and ablative case. Here we're going to have a noun that is either in the genitive or ablative case along with an adjective that is going to be used to modify another noun. In other words, this construction of both a gen uh, genitive or ablative noun plus an adjective together will be both being used to modify another noun. This construction describes a noun by indicating its character, quality, or size. And do note that the ablative case was often used, especially to describe physical traits. These constructions will follow the noun that they describe. So let's look at a couple of examples here. Here we have femina magni sapientiae, a woman, magni, uh, excuse me, femina, and then you got magni sapientiae. This is in the genitive case, a woman, a woman of great wisdom, of great wisdom. So sapientiae is of wisdom. Magni, of course, is the genitive adjective of great wisdom. So both of these together are describing femina, uh, femina, a woman of great wisdom. Let's look at another example here, pox in hominibus bonae voluntatis, peace, pox, um, where is it at? Oh, there's the rest of it. There you go. Uh, peace uh, among or in, it's it's in men. You wouldn't say in men. Among men, bonae volantis, uh, voluntatis. These are both genitive singular. Peace among men of goodwill. So bonae volantatis is describing hominibus. It's, it's men of goodwill. Here we have concilium vis modi, a plan of this kind, a plan of this kind. 
And here we have Meles Firma Manu, uh, the soldier. And here we have an ablative example here. These previous ones were all genitive. This is Firma Manu, both ablative singular, the soldier with the strong hand. So we're having to add a, a preposition here to help translate that ablative case, the soldier with the strong hand. And one final example, this is actually a sentence here, es moribus bonis, you are, and we'd have to really supply the, the phrase a person, you are a person with good character or of good character. These are both ablative, modifying the uh, ref, inferred uh, person, the you. You are a person with or of good character. So that's genitive, ablative description. These are all giving us a description of the character of the noun which it's modifying. The woman, what's her character? She's of great wisdom. What kind of piece is this? It's a piece among men. Uh, excuse me, what kind of men is this? Of goodwill. What kind of plan is this? It's a plan of this kind. What kind of soldier? He's, he's with a strong hand. And what kind of person? The S here, you are a person of good character. So they're all describing, uh, uh, des describing the person, uh, the noun that it's modifying. All right, we'll have a discussion in class regarding these. Make sure you go back and watch this video if you need to. And don't forget, of course, to study your vocabulary. It's been a great semester with you guys.